Today's topic is nervous system. Introduction. Nervous system controls all activities of our body. It is quicker than other control system. For example, endocrine system. Its functional units are neurons and about 100 billion neurons are present. There is a interconnection among various parts of nervous system. Now see the structure of neuron. So it is divided into main three part cell body. This is dendrites and this is axon. Now cell body contains nucleus and cytoplasm and in cytoplasm there is a nasal granules. Now process coming out from cell body known as a dendrites and long process coming out from cell body is known as a axon. Now functions of neuron dendrites are basically responsible for receiving information sensory information from other neurons and sensory receptors nucleus provides energy for the neuron to carry out its function and axon it carries neurons message to other body areas now this axon is covered by myelin sheath which is basically a covering it helps speed of neural impulses and these are terminal branches of axon which form junction with other neurons which is known as a synapse Now neuroglia, they are basically a supporting cell in the nervous system. They are found in central nervous system as well as in peripheral nervous system. In central nervous system, there are four type of neuroglial cell, astrocytes, ependymal cell, oligodendrocytes and microglia and in peripheral nervous system there are two type of cell stellate cells and squan cell now astrocytes it maintains blood brain barrier provide structural support regulate iron nutrient and dissolved gas concentration and absorb and recycle neurotransmitters and form scar tissue after injury. Appendymal cell, it lines ventricles in the brain and center canal in the spinal cord. As well as it assists in producing, circulating and monitoring CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. Oligodendrocytes, myelinate central nervous system axon and provide structural framework. Microglia, it removes cell debris, waste and pathogens by phagocytosis mechanism. Peripheral nervous system, stellate cell and squan cell. Stellate cell surround a neuron cell bodies in ganglia regulate oxygen carbon dioxide nutrient and neurotransmitter level around neurons in ganglia squan cells surround all axon in peripheral nervous system responsible for myelination of peripheral axon participate in a repair process after injury in short oligodendrocytes form myelination 
around axon of central nervous system and squamous cell provide myelination around peripheral axons now functions of nervous system sensory function integrative function motor function homeostasis sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system first sensory function now as we know that there are various type of sensation like touch pressure vibration temperature stereognosis proprioceptions now this sensation are carried by sensory nerve fiber or we can say afferent nerve fiber towards the brain or to the brain so this sensory function is mainly responsible for carrying all the sensation from periphery from the body to the brain integrative function involves interneurons for integration of sensory information motor function muscle contraction and secretion from the gland known as a motor function so command coming from motor area of the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord first and then to the effector organ like muscle and glands along with endocrine it helps in homeostasis maintenance of internal environment of cell and sympathetic and parasympathetic function sympathetic division of nervous system prepares the body for emergency condition and parasympathetic helps to conserve and restore energy now how nervous system is develop development of nervous system each individual begins as a single cell structure first first fertilize ovum then there is a series of cell division occurs hollow ball of cells are formed within which a mass of cell forms the embryo proper in which a neural plate is formed which modifies to form groove then grows to form neural tube which enclosed by the neural crest cell which form three primary brain structures known as a forebrain midbrain and hindbrain so this is a neural plate okay so it is made up of ectoderm middle layer is mesoderm and then endoderm this is neural plate so this is embryological structure day 19 of embryological life you can see here there is a formation of groove in the neural plate day 21 now this groove becomes deeper at day 23 you can see here there is a formation of tube it is enclosed by neural crest cell now this neural crest cell gives origin to future dorsal root ganglion okay dorsal root ganglion now various vesicles are formed within primary brain structure at the 20 days of embryological life as we know that primary brain structures are prosencephalon also known as a forebrain mesencephalon known as a midbrain rhombencephalon known as a hindbrain and last is spinal cord now primary vesicles are prosencephalon mesencephalon rhombencephalon and spinal cord now secondary vesicles are formed at 35 days of embryological life now cavities of this prosencephalon forebrain is divided into two cavities one cavity 
for telencephalon and another for diencephalon and from this in future there is a formation of cerebral hemisphere from telencephalon and from diencephalon there is a formation of thalamus subthalamus hypothalamus and neuro pituitary from mesencephalon there is a formation of midbrain from metencephalon there is a formation of pons and cerebellum from myelencephalon there is a formation of medulla and last formation of spinal cord so this is primary and secondary vesicles now organization of nervous system how nervous system is organized so it is divided into central and peripheral nervous system now this central nervous system is made up of brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system made up of somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system now peripheral nervous system somatic and autonomic there are two part of this peripheral nervous system now this somatic nervous system basically made up of spinal nerves 31 pairs of spinal nerves are there cranial nerves there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves an autonomic nervous system made up of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system somatic nervous system as we know that it is made up of spinal and cranial nerves so first spinal nerves spinal nerves are of 31 pair which is attached with the spinal cord by dorsal and ventral roots so eight pair of cervical nerves are there they are called cervical nerves because they are originated from the cervical part of spinal cord likewise 12 pair of thoracic nerves then five pairs of lumbar nerves five pairs of sacral nerves and one pairs of coccygeal nerves so they are originated from different area of the spinal cord now cranial nerves total 12 pairs so some are afferent sensory some are efferent motor and some have both the types motor and sensory so they are known as a mixed cranial nerves so total 12 pair of cranial nerves are there first one is known as olfactory second one is optic third one is oculomotor fourth trochlear fifth trigeminal sixth abduction seventh facial eighth vestibulocochlear ninth glossopharyngeal tenth vagus eleventh spinal accessory and twelfth hypoglossal nerve now principal function of cranial nerves first and second first cranial nerve is olfactory and second is optic this cranial nerves first and second are sensory related to function of olfaction so first olfactory cranial nerve is responsible for olfaction smell and second is known as a optic for vision third fourth and sixth cranial nerve are mixed nerve means they have both function motor as well as sensory they are concerned with the movement of eyeball fifth is mixed nerve again concerned with carrying sensation of face and intervening muscle of mastication so fifth cranial nerve is trigeminal third is oculomotor fourth is trochlear and sixth is abduction now seventh cranial nerve it is again mixed nerve name is facial related to test sensation supplying muscle of face nose palate lacrimal and salivary glands eighth cranial nerve is known as a vestibulo cochlear which is sensory nerve related to hearing and balance and equilibrium ninth is known as a glossopharyngeal again it is mixed nerve involved in 
test sensation and swallowing tenth which is known as a vagus again it is a mix now it supplies the heart bronchi then eleventh is known as a spinal accessory and twelfth hypoglossal now both this eleventh and twelfth are the motor and going to neck and tongue muscles respectively so again this is picture showing various cranial lobe olfactory for olfaction then optic for vision then third fourth sixth supplying the muscle of eyeball then trigeminal facial area supplies the muscle of face sinuses teeth etc motor part which supplies the muscle of mastication main muscle is masseter for mastication then seventh cranial lobe muscle of face then here vestibular cochlea eighth cranial lobe for hearing then glossopharyngeal ninth cranial lobe motor part supplies pharynx sensory part tongue tonsil and pharynx vagus tenth cranial lobe heart lungs bronchi and gi tract then eleventh spinal accessory we supplies the muscle of neck like sternocleido mastoid and trapezius and twelfth cranial lobe is hypoglossal muscle of tongue it supplies the muscle of tongue now central nervous system we know that it is made up of brain and spinal cord now whole tissue of the brain and spinal cord is made up of neurons and supporting cells neuroglia the structures of brain and spinal cord are arranged in two layers namely the gray matter and white matter in cerebrum or we can say in cerebral cortex gray matter is seen outside and white matter inside while in spinal cord gray matter inside and white matter outside now structure of brain it is the largest and most complex mass of nervous tissue weight is about 1.5 kg it is located within the skull and continuous as a spinal cord from foramen magnum at base of skull brain and spinal cord are covered by three layer of meninges called outer dura mater middle arachnoid and inner pia mater so there are three layer of meninges which covers brain and spinal cord now space so there are two space subdural space and sub arachnoid space subdural space is potential space containing tissue fluid between dura mater and arachnoid mater first layer and second layer subdural means beneath the dura sub arachnoid space is between arachnoid mater and pia mater is filled with csf cerebro spinal fluid so this is space between second and third layer which circulates csf circulates through space and is continuous in brain and spinal cord now division of brain in three parts as we know that this is primary brain structure fore brain which is known as a prosencephalon mid brain mesencephalon and hind brain romencephalon now this fore brain prosencephalon is divided into telen and diencephalon from telencephalon there is a formation of two cerebral hemisphere and from diencephalon formation of thalamus subthalamus metathalamus and hypothalamus mid brain which is known as a mesencephalon 
in which there are two part dorsal and ventral part hind brain which is also known as a rhomencephalon are divided into three part pons medulla oblongata and cerebellum now brain stem mid brain pons and medulla together form this structure which is known as a brain stem so it is a stem like structure you can see here mid brain pons and medulla okay so this is known as a brain stem and this portion is known as a cerebellum cerebellum which is attached with the brain stem and this is cerebral cortex this is cerebral cortex now coming to the brain stem mid brain pons medulla now importance of the brain stem all the cranial nerves are situated in the brain stem for example from mid brain there is origin of third and fourth cranial nerves from pons fifth sixth seventh eighth cranial nerves and from medulla 9th 10th 11th and 12th cranial nerves cerebellum is connected to the brain stem by three peduncles superior middle and inferior cerebellar peduncles and now this brain stem has a important centers for control of respiration blood pressure and swallowing so just revise the peduncles cerebellar peduncle superior peduncle middle peduncle and inferior peduncle which connect cerebellum to the brain stem and here you can see in this picture origin of cranial nose okay so olfactory now from this filament of olfactory now olfactory bulb then optic now so this is optic chiasma okay from here there is a origin of second cranial now then you can see here from mid brain there is origin of third fourth means oculomotor and trochlear then from pons there is origin of fifth sixth facial which is seventh and eighth cranial lobe and from medulla oblongata origin of ninth tenth eleventh and hypoglossal twelfth cranial lobe okay so all the cranial lobes are originated from the brain stem now telencephalon or cerebrum or cerebral cortex it consists of two hemisphere there are two cerebral hemisphere separated from each other in upper part by a median longitudinal fissure and in lower part connected by bundle of nerve fibers which is known as a corpus callosum now surface of hemisphere is covered by a thin layer of gray matter which is about 2 to 4 mm thick which is known as a cerebral cortex so this is structure of cerebral cortex now you can see here there is a large convolution they are known as a sulci and gyri which is mainly responsible for increasing surface area of the brain so this elevated portion it is known as a gyri and groove like structure it is known as a gyri a uh, sorry sulci so sulci and gyri are there which is mainly responsible for increasing surface area now cerebral cortex of each hemisphere is divided into four lobes frontal lobe parietal lobe temporal lobe and occipital lobe and subcortical nuclei lie deep 
it is known as a basal ganglia okay it is known as a basal ganglia now structure of spinal cord gross anatomy it is a long cylindrical structure 45 to 50 cm in length and 2 cm in diameter lies outside the skull from base of skull now exchange of this spinal cord from foramen magnum to lower border of first lumbar vertebra and it ends as a cauda equina horse tail like structure which is a lumbar and sacral roots so here you can see exchange of spinal cord foramen magnum or we can say upper border of first cervical vertebra to lower border of lumbar vertebra l1 now upper end as we know that it is a continuation of medulla and lower end called conus medullaris okay so you can see here this is pointed end this is conus medullaris which is continuous with the fibrous cord called phylum terminale okay so this is fibrous cord you can see here in pink color this is phylum terminale now shape is cylindrical with two fusiform shaped enlargement so one is cervical enlargement so this is fusiform cervical enlargement and another is lumbar enlargement so which gives supplies to upper limbs and lower limbs respectively now meninges so it is basically covering of spinal cord so dura mater it is outermost layer continuous with epineurum of the spinal nose so this is dura mater and it is continuous with the epineurum of spinal nose so this is epineurum of spinal nose and this is dura mater now arachnoid mater it is second layer thin and wispy okay so this one is second layer arachnoid mater and third layer which is stick to the spinal cord is pia mater bound tightly to the surface of spinal cord now what is the importance of this pia mater it forms phylum terminale which anchors spinal cord to coccyx forms denticulate ligament that attach spinal cord to the dura now spaces epidural space means external to dura so now what is the importance of epidural space anesthetic agents are injected here and it is filled with the fat subdural space beneath the dura which is filled with serous fluid and subarachnoid space between pia mater and arachnoid mater which is filled with cerebrospinal fluid now internal structure of spinal cord so this is basically a cross section of spinal cord so first of all from anteriorly we can see here it is a anterior median fissure and this one is posterior median sulcus and as we know that presentation of gray matter and white matter in spinal cord gray matter present inside and white matter outside and in the brain it is opposite white matter present inside and gray matter outside in brain in cerebral cortex we can say now in spinal cord gray matter present inside so it is a h shaped mass presentation is h shape now gray matter mainly contains cell bodies neuronal cell bodies dendrites 
and part of axons and this grammar divided into horns so this is anterior horn it is also known as a ventral horn this is posterior or dorsal horn and this one is lateral horn now white matter it is mainly made up of myelinated and unmyelinated nerve fibers divided into three columns it is also known as a funiculi so ventral column or funiculi dorsal column or dorsal funiculi lateral funiculi or lateral column so gray matter is divided into horns and white matter divided into funiculi or columns now centrally there is a central canal and in front of central canal there is a part of gray matter which connect both the halves of gray matter which is known as a gray commissure anterior gray commissure and this is part of white matter in front of central canal which connect both the halves of white matter which is known as a white commissure anterior white commissure so this is a cross section of the spinal cord now gray matter organization so in gray matter there is a dorsal root which is sensory it contains ganglion it is known as a dorsal root ganglion and ventral part connected with the ventral root which is motor in function and together it forms spinal nerves so dorsal root are sensory and ventral roots are motor which is also known as a bell mesendilo now subdivision of gray matter of spinal cord into nuclei and into lamina so there are various nuclei present in gray matter like posterior marginal nucleus substantia gelatinosa of ronaldo nucleus proprius then nucleus a dorsal nucleus intermediate intermedio lateral and intermedio medio nucleus then dorso medial nucleus ventro medial nucleus accessory and phrenic nuclei ventro lateral dorso lateral and retro dorso lateral nuclei so there are various group of nuclei present in gray matter so groups of ventral and dorsal horn neurons ventral horn neurons of spinal gray matter mainly involved in motor functions functionally motor neurons are four types a group of ventral horn neurons dorsal neurons and neuron in dorsal horn and in lateral horn group of ventral horn neurons arranged in three medial lateral columns medial group dorso medial and ventro medial lateral group retro dorso lateral dorso lateral and ventro lateral nucleus central group phrenic nucleus and accessory nucleus groups of dorsal horn neurons first neuron is substantia gelatinosa of ronaldo they are basically small cells made up of gelatinous material that's why it is called substantia gelatinosa traversed by fibers of dorsal nerve roots which convey pain and thermal sensation and it has role in get control of pain so it is one of pain suppression system second neuron is nucleus proprius composed of internuncial cell and tract cell dorsal nucleus composed of tract cell 
which receive proprioceptive touch and pressure sensation from trunk and lower limbs and it is also called thoracic nucleus or clark's column and it extends from c8 to l2 segment of spinal cord and fourth is posterior marginal nucleus now neurons in a dorsal horn which is mainly involved in sensory function dorsal horn neuron are of two type internuncial and traxial internuncial neuron located between sensory fibers terminating in the dorsal horn and motor neurons originating in the ventral horn that's why it is called internuncial neuron the trax cell this cells receive impulses from various receptors of the body through dorsal nerve root fibers exon of this cell enter the white matter of the spinal cord on the same or opposite side and constitute either intersegmental tracts or ascending tracts which terminate in various masses of gray matter in the brain neurons in lateral horn it is also known as a neurons of intermedial lateral group of visceral of neurons which exchange from neurons present in t1 to l2 lateral horn so t1 that is thoracic segment l is lumbar segment these are preganglionic neuron of sympathetic nervous system their exon terminate in relation to post ganglionic neuron in sympathetic ganglia neurons present in sir uh, s2 and s4 lateral horn sacral root these are preganglionic neuron of sacral component of parasympathetic nervous system and their exon leave spinal cord through ventral roots to reach spinal nerves for example pelvic splanchic nerves for pelvis and abdomen now division of spinal gray matter into lamina now this lamina is known as a rexed lamina divided into 10 lamina so lamina 1 it is basically correspond to posterior marginal nucleus so this is lamina 1 it is correspond to posterior marginal nucleus lamina 2 correspond with the substantia gelatinosa of rolando lamina 3 and 4 it is correspond with nucleus proprius lamina 5 neck of dorsal gray column lamina 6 dorsal nucleus in base of dorsal gray column lamina 7 confined to lateral gray column lamina 8 and 9 confined to ventral ventral gray horn lamina 10 forms gray matter around the central canal and consists mostly of neuroglial cell white matter as we know that it is formed by no fibers arranged as ascending and descending tracts and it is divided into right and left halves each half exhibits following parts posterior funiculus anterior funiculus and lateral funiculus now presentation of white matter so most of ascending and descending tract passes through this white matter so there are as a list of ascending tracts like dorsal column tracts spino cerebellar spino then lateral spinothalamic tract and anterior spinothalamic tract and in descending tracts there is a lateral sp- reticulospinal lateral corticospinal rubrospinal medial reticulospinal anterior corticospinal vestibulospinal and tectospinal tracts so these are extra pyramidal tracts descending tracts motor tracts spinal segments consist of 31 spinal segment eighth cervical segment gives origin 
to its cervical nodes. Likewise, 12 thoracic segment, 12 thoracic nodes, 5 lumbar, 5 lumbar nodes, 5 sacral, 5 sacral nodes, and 1 coccygeal segment gives origin to 1 coccygeal node. So each spinal nerve is mixed now formed by union of two roots, dorsal and ventral. Dorsal root is sensory and ventral is motor. Now dorsal nerve root, it is formed by several rootlets attached to the surface of spinal cord. All sensory fiber reach spinal cord through dorsal nerve roots. Each dorsal nerve root is marked by swelling known as a dorsal nerve root ganglion or spinal ganglion which is composed of T-shaped unipolar neuron with peripheral and center process. Now this peripheral process it exchange up to the sensory receptor in the skin that's why area of skin supplied by spinal nerve is known as a dermatome and center process has two division medial and lateral division now medial division is myelinated group 1 and 2 fibers which is mainly responsible for carrying proprioception then touch, pressure and vibration. So group 1 mostly carries proprioception and group 2 touch, pressure and vibration. Lateral division in third, five, uh, third group and fourth group. Now third group is thinly myelinated group and fourth group is unmyelinated fibers. Fast and discriminative pain and temperature sensation carried by group 3, slow pain and visceral sensation carried by group 4. Now last is function of spinal cord we will discuss in next lecture. Thank you.